uh, in the previous class, um, in the previous class, we have been studying from uh, chapter 12, verses 1 to 6, about the uh, a woman clothed with the sun and uh, her child and the great red dragon and the, and the details of those points. At the same time, uh, today we are going to, uh, to continue the study of uh, chapter 12 and if possible, uh, uh, chapter 13 also. And before we uh, move further, uh, we must know one thing that, you know, the eschatological events, uh, which is uh, mentioned in the book of Revelation, uh, is not recorded chronologically in the book of Revelation. But the events uh, which happens during the time of Great Tribulation occurs in different times, in different times. I mean, so uh, we have to keep that in our mind. And sometimes, you know, we are thinking that everything which is written chapter by chapter, uh, that is going to happen uh, according to that order. But it is not going to happen according to that honor, order, but it'll be, it will be, the events will be taking place in, in different different times, okay? Especially, you know, we are studying uh, now about the Great Tribulation uh, and the things which is happening may not be in an order, but uh, I mean, everything is going to happen in, in different times. Okay, now let us go to the, the uh, next portion and let us uh, turn our attention to chapter 12, verses uh, uh, 7 to 9. Uh, chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. Uh, uh, we will read that portion, then uh, uh, I will explain those portions. Yes, uh, Elsa, you are ready? Yeah. Now, war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Okay, so in this portion, uh, we see the war in heaven, the war in heaven. Okay, so that is the portion that uh, uh, Revelation chapter 12, verses seven to nine, that uh, you can, you can uh, uh, see the heading there, the war in heaven. So uh, in, the, in the initial verses of this chapter, uh, we saw that Satan is trying to attack the woman and the child, but uh, he was not able to attack uh, the, the woman and also the child, the male child, because we read that the child was taken up to heaven and the woman was protected by God to a particular place which was preferred by God. Okay, So this is very clear that we already uh, learned uh, uh, last week itself that, uh, I mean, uh, when uh, Satan was trying to attack the woman and the child, that means the Israel and the people of Israel and Jesus, when he was trying to attack those people, uh, he was not able to attack and he was not, uh, he was trying, but he was not able to do that because, uh, I mean, the child was taken up to the heaven and also the woman was protected by God to a place uh, which was prepared by, I mean, God. But now in these verses, uh, verses seven to nine, we read there uh, uh, that uh, there, there is a war in heaven. There is a war in heaven, okay? So we may get uh, a, a confusion on this uh, statement that why there is a war in heaven. And heaven is a holy place. And what does it mean by making a statement that there is a war in heaven? Okay? This is a confusion that most of the people are having in their, in their mind that I mean, what is the need of the war? Or what is the need of the battle in, in heaven? Okay, why that statement is given in the Bible? Okay, so let me try to clarify that uh, doubt uh, maybe uh, with uh, some of the uh, uh, historical evidence of the, of the Bible. And let me, let, me, let me prove that what is the meaning of the uh, uh, war in, in heaven, <clears throat> okay. So one thing is sure, you know, from the beginning of the history, the devil is always in enmity with God and his people. So always in the history, we can understand that devil or Satan is always in enmity with uh, God and his people. We know that even though Lucifer was thrown down from the heaven, still he has the permission to enter into heaven and to have a conversation with God in some particular times, OK? 
Okay, it is very clear that we know that Lucifer, Lucifer was uh, I mean, cut down from heaven, and uh, uh, at the same time, after falling down from heaven to the earth, he has the permission to enter into heaven and also to have a conversation with God in some particular times. Uh, let me give you some example that in the book of Job, we read that Satan stood before God and talking about the God, I mean, the God about the, the fear, I mean, God fearing man, Job. So we know that Job was a God fearing man. But Satan is standing before God and he is talking about the, about the God-fearing man, Job. And also the second example is um, uh, in the book of Zechariah. In the book of Zechariah, we see there that Satan standing at the right hand of God to accuse the high priest, Joshua. So Joshua is the second example that you can I mean, take from take from, I mean, Bible, from the Old Testament that uh, um, uh, in, in the book of Zechariah, we read that, I mean, uh, Satan was standing at the right hand of God to accuse the high priest Joshua. And also when we go to the uh, book of Daniel, uh, chapter 10, you know, in the book of Daniel, chapter 10, uh, you can see there that God answered the prayer of Daniel the first day of his prayer. So his prayer uh, continued uh, uh, to 21 days. But at the same time, God already answered the prayer uh, to Daniel uh, at the first day of his prayer, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia or Satan, okay, the, 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 the prince of the uh, kingdom of Persia is uh, also known as the Satan. The so Satan was withstanding the angel uh, of God for 21 days in the, in the air, in the air. Okay, so that's what we understand from the book of uh, I mean, Daniel chapter 10. Even when we come to the New Testament, okay, especially in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. Yeah, let us read uh, Luke chapter uh, 22, verses 31 and 32. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Okay, you know, here Jesus is saying to, 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 to Simon Peter that, you know, uh, Jesus was saying, oh, Simon Peter, I um, mean, Satan was asking a permission to sift you like a wheat. Okay, so... Uh, um, uh, Satan was asking a permission to God to sift Simon Peter like a wheat, but God did not allow for that because, I mean, God was considering the faith of Peter and he was saying that, okay, I was considering your faith. I mean, you may lose, you may, you may lose the faith in your life. So that, was, that is, the, the, the situation is different. The situation is says that, I mean, Satan was, I mean, uh, having a conversation with the, I mean, God and Jesus Christ. Okay, so which means he has the access. So Satan or the devil has the access to heaven now and can talk to God at any time. So Satan, Satan can talk to God any time. Because Bible itself says that Satan is considered as a God of this world in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Okay, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, we can see that um, Satan is considered in, in different places in different manner. Okay, in Second Corinthians chapter four verse four, it says that the God of this world. Okay, and in Ephesians chapter two verse two, Satan is considered as the prince of the power of the air, as the prince of the power of the air. And also one more time in Ephesians chapter six verse twelve, Satan is mentioned or Satan is considered as the forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Okay, the forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. So these are the things that we understand about Satan and uh, that uh, what, is the, what is the access that Satan has to enter into the presence of God and to have a talk with God. But, you know, in, in this particular portion, we understand that there is a war there is a war. That means uh, the uh, the war, which I mean, mentioned in chapter twelve, during the time of the great tribulation, um, a Satan and his angels will be thrown down to the earth, okay, from the heavenly places forever and ever. 
Okay, so that is what we read in uh, verse uh, uh, verse nine. That it says that, and the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of the old who is called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So we understand during the time of the great tribulation, maybe at the end of the great tribulation, maybe the the the, the last half of the great tribulation, Satan and his angels will be thrown down to the earth from the heavenly places forever. That after that, they won't be allowed to heaven. I mean, they won't be allowed to enter into heaven. Okay, that's what we understand from uh, the book of Revelation. And it, again, in, in verse 7, chapter 12, verse 7, uh, we read that, that, and there was a war in heaven, Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon, the dragon and his angels waged war. Okay, so the meaning of that is, we understand, it is written, there was a war in heaven, but it is not mentioned where in heaven, okay? It is not exactly written where in heaven, where it is going to happen. But we can assume that the war is going to happen in the sky or in the air or in the cloud, which is known as the first layer of the uh, layer of the three heavens, okay? So, we can assume that it is not clear, it is not exactly written that uh, in, in which part of the heaven that it is going to happen, the war is going to happen. Okay, but we can assume one thing that it is going to happen in the, in the sky or in the air. Okay, so we understand that that is the first layer of the three heavens. Because I already uh, explained about the three layers of the heavens on the basis of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Okay. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says that in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. Okay. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. Okay. So the, the plural form of uh, that word is used there. In the beginning, God created heavens. Okay. It is not written heaven, but it is written heavens. According to that, we can, uh, we can believe, and I already when gave you the details of the three layers of the heaven. Uh, that the first one is the layer of clouds, okay, the air or the sky, you can call it like that. The first layer of the heaven is the, is the cloud or the air or the sky. And the second layer uh, is the, uh, uh, you, can, you can see where the, 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 the layer or the place where the sun, moon, and the stars are fixed. Okay? So God has fixed the sun, moon, and the stars in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a particular place. And that is the I mean, place you can call it as a second, I mean, second stage of the heaven. And the third one, the third heaven is the heaven of heavens. In Bible, specifically, it is written, and they, all these things that uh, there are many references that uh, oh, I already gave you, I mean, uh, on in, in one class. Okay, so the heaven of heavens, okay, Sorgadi Sorgam and Armalatu Parnirikana, the heaven. Of the heavens, Sorgangaluda Sorgam, Sorgangal Kumiriula Sorgam, okay, uh, where the Almighty God is seated. Okay, these are the three stages or three layers of the heaven that we understand from the Bible, total, I mean, a meaning of that heaven. Okay, so we can assume that this wall could be happening in the first layer of heaven. Okay, now, uh, this is the war between Michael and his angels against the dragon and his angels. Okay, there is Michael and his angels are there. Dragon or the or the Satan is there and his angels are there. So this is the war in heaven between Michael and his angels against the dragon and his angels. Okay, in fact, the war was not in between God and the dragon, but against God's angels and the satanic angels. Listen very carefully. You can see in chapter 12, there is a war in heaven. In fact, you have to understand one thing, that this war was not between God and the dragon. Okay? It was not between God and the dragon. It was not between the God's angels and the dragon's angels. But we understand that this was between the God's angels and the satanic angels. Okay? God's angels and the satanic angels. Okay. Now, in, 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 in the same chapter, chapter 12, verse 7, um, uh, there we read that the dragon or the Satan could not win the battle. There is a big battle, there's a big war, 
Okay, chapter 12, verse 7 says that the, the dragon and his angels or Satan could not win the battle, but Michael, uh, Michael the archangel and his angels got victory. Amen. So that is what we understand from verse 7. Okay, now we will go to chapter 12, verse 9. Okay, you know, when you read uh, chapter 12, verse 9, uh, can you read uh, that with only that verse, uh, Amen, uh, Elsa? In saying he ascended, what does it mean? But that he had also de descended into the lower regions, the earth. Okay, chapter 12, verse 9, right? Okay, here, here, what is that? Okay, we see the different names of Satan is there. Okay, different names of Satan. Okay, um, at the same time, not only here, okay, in, in, um, um, uh, chapter 12, verse 9, the great dragon is there. I mean, the serpent of old is there, and devil is there, Satan is there. So different names are given in this uh, chapter 12, verse 9. Okay, Not only here, in different places, different names are given for Satan uh, according to his nature and activities. Okay, I'm giving you, I mean, different names of the Satan in Bible now. There are 20 total. Uh, uh, I'll be giving... Uh, maybe five each, okay, in one slide, in one slide, okay. So uh, let us see, uh, you can, you can, I mean, uh, write it down, all those uh, 20 names of, uh, different names of Satan uh, with uh, the uh, the um, references, okay. The first name, okay, as, as, okay, same time when you are writing, let me uh, explain all those points. You can write down and I will explain those points. We are not going to read uh, the, the Bible verse because of the lack of time, okay. So the first name for Satan is Lucifer, okay? Um, in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, you can see that, uh, you, can, you cannot see the, the word, the name Lucifer. The Lucifer is not written there, but instead of that, it is written that, uh, uh, what is that, the morning star or something, okay? The morning star, the sun of the morning, uh, or like that, okay? So the Lucifer, the word Lucifer is not written in, uh, in, in, in English Bible or in Malayalam Bible or in any other language. At the same time, Lucifer is the Latin form of the star. Okay? Lucifer is the Latin form of the star, which means shining, which means shining. We understand that Lucifer once, okay, before the fall, before doing sin, Lucifer was shining in the presence of God. Okay? He, he, was a, he was a God's angel. He was a God's angel. Okay? But he became the demonic, I mean, leader of the angels, okay? So after the fall, after the, uh, after rebelling against God. Okay, so that is what, okay, in Malayalam it is written Sukran, okay? Lucifer, Arunode Putranaya, Shukra, So that is the reason that we are calling that name as, a, as uh, the Latin form of that star, is which means shining. The second one is Son of the Morning, okay? The sun of the morning, or you can call it as the sun of the dawn. Sun of the dawn. Uh, what is that in Malayalam? I don't know the uh, I don't know the putra. Yeah, sun of the morning. I don't know the putra. Okay, that also is in same uh, uh, chapter. Isaiah chapter fourteen, verse twelve. It says that the sun of rising sun. Okay, the sun of rising sun. Okay, that is the meaning of that sun of morning. And the third name which is given for the same Satan is the old serpent, okay, Pare Pamba, the old serpent, okay, that is in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, and also chapter 20, verse 2, okay, so uh, the meaning of that old serpent is cunningness and deception, okay, cunning and deception, so that is the meaning of the old serpent, okay, so we understand that when you can see the old serpent in the Garden of Eden, okay, when the serpent was coming to cunningly to, 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 to deceive, I mean, even Adam, okay? So we understand that serpent, the satanic power is known as the old serpent, Pamba. okay? And also the fourth one is, I mean, uh, it, it is called uh, as uh, the great fairy red dragon. The great fairy red dragon that you can see in Revelation chapter 12, verses 3, 7, 9 and also chapter 20 verse 2 okay 
So the meaning of that great fairy red dragon is bloodshedding and murder. Okay. So always this dragon is uh, uh, the the reason that it is written red dragon because the it always it is uh, causing the bloodshedding and also killing many people means murdering. Okay. So. മലയാളത്തിലെ പറഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്നത് തീ നിറമുള്ള തീയുടെ നിറമുള്ള ഐ മീൻ മഹാസർപ്പം എന്നാണ് പറഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്നത് തീ നിറമുള്ള മഹാസർപ്പം എന്നാണ് മലയാളത്തിൽ പറഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്നത് ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ഫിഫ്ത് വൺ ഈസ് ഡെവിൾ ഓക്കെ ഡെവിൾ ഇൻ മലയാളം ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് റിട്ടൺ പിഷാജ് ഓക്കെ ഡെവിൾ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദിൻ റെവലേഷൻ ചാപ്റ്റർ ട്വൽവ് വേഴ്സസ് നയൻ ആൻഡ് ചാപ്റ്റർ ട്വന്റി വേഴ്സസ് ടു ആൻഡ് ടെൻ ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ it is known as the demon demon okay, demon means you know the buddha demonic powers are there so that is called as the devil okay and the meaning of that is destroy destroy okay so uh, i mean uh, the person who is destroying something is known as the devil the main duty of that person is destroying something so that's the reason we are calling that devil and the destroyer and we are going to the second i mean portion second slide that is the sixth one sixth one is satan okay this the, the sixth one is satan uh, which you can see from revelation chapter 12 verse 9 and chapter 20 verses 2 and 10 chapter 20 verses 2 and 10 okay and uh, the meaning of satan is adversary or opponent adversary or opponent um and then uh, um, adversary adina adina malayalathil koduthirikkunna vaakkukala kutten chumathunavan enna kutten chumathunavan allengil ediraali adversary nu parnal kutten chumathunavan alleng accuser accuser nokke parayam okay enna kutram aarobikkunavan okay even in in, in first corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 and first peter chapter 5 verse 8 also you can see all these uh, i mean uh, things okay so adversary satan adversary or opponent okay again uh the seventh one the seventh name which is given in bible for satan is the ruler of this world okay logathinte ee logathinte prabhu ee logathinte prabhu the ruler of this world okay the references is john chapter 12 verse 31 john chapter 14 verse 30 and john chapter 16 verse 11 okay the ruler of this world logathinte prabhu okay the ruler of this world and again the eighth one is the god of this age god of this age e logathinte devam e logathinte devam god of this age second corinthian chapter 4 verse 4 and also the ninth one is the god of this age yeah ninth one is the prince of the power of the air the prince of the power of the air and it is not easy to write down all those points but we will try to take it down okay the prince of the power of the air malayalam aagashathile adhipati aagashathinte adhipati okay ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 and the and the 10th one the 10th name is the spirit of disobedience the spirit of disobedience anusarna kedinde aathmaavu anusarna kedinde aathmaavu spirit of uh, disobedience ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 the spirit of disobedience so that is the, that is the 10th one and we are going to the 11th one the 11th one is the liar and the father of lies the liar and the father of lies the liar and the father of lies endana boshka boshku parayunavanum boshkinte appanum endana in john chapter 8 verse 44 so the bible calls in that way for satan that he is the liar and the father of lies Vashku Parayinthavanum, Vashku Indi Appinum Aana, John chapter 8 verse 44. And the 12th one is the evil one, the evil one, Dushtan, the evil one. 1 John chapter 5 verse 19, the evil one. 
1 John chapter 5 verse 19. You have to understand one thing that the reason that the different names that are given for Satan is uh, according to the nature, according to the activity that how the Satan is working among the among the uh, people of God. Okay, only because of that the different names are given. So the twelfth one is the evil one. First one, chapter five, verse nineteen. Thirteenth one is Belial. Belial, Second Corinthians chapter six, verse fifteen, which means worthless or hopeless. Worthless or hopeless. And the fourteenth one is Belzebul. Belzebul, you can understand from Matthew chapter 12, verse 24, Mark chapter 3, verse 22. That is the one that is actually one of the gods of the Philistines. Okay. The Philistines had a, a many gods and goddesses. So this uh, Belzebul is one of the gods of Philistines. And uh, the meaning of Belzebul is the prince of evil spirit. The prince of evil spirit is the meaning of Belzebul. Okay. And in uh, the, the, the 15th one is enemy. Enemy is the next name of Satan, which is written in Matthew chapter 13, verses 27 and 28. Matthew chapter 13 verses 27 and 28, that is the 15th one, 15th name of Satan, which is given in, in Bible. And now we are going to the 16th one that is in the next slide. That is, yeah, the 16th one is Abaddon or Apollyon. Abaddon or Apollyon is the 16th one that is in Revelation chapter nine, verse 11. Revelation chapter nine, verse 11. The meaning of Abaddon or Apollyon is destroyer, destroyer. Mm. Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. And the 17th one, the 17th name, which is given for Satan is murder. Murder, Kulevadagan, Kulevadagan. Uh, Abaddon, Apollyon, the meaning is Nashagan. Nashipikinavanash again and Anna. Seventeenth one is murder, Kulavadagan, Revelation chapter twelve, verses one to six, and eighteen. Eighteen the number is deceiver. One second, deceiver. Revelation chapter twelve, verses seven to nine, deceiver. And the nineteenth one is accuser. Accuser. Revelation chapter twelve, verses ten and eleven. Accuser in Malayalam, Abhavadi. Abhavadi, accuser. And the last one, the 12th, 20th one is persecutor. The persecutor, that is uh, uh, Pedagan in Revelation chapter 12, verses 11 to 17. Persecutor, Revelation chapter 12, verses 11 to 17. The, these are the 20 names which is given in Bible for satanic powers. That means the evil spirit or Satan or devil, whatever it may be. And these names are given according to the nature and according to the um, activities that they are doing in different times and different places. Okay, So this is the reason that it is given there. Now, we are going to chapter 12, verse 12. Chapter 12, verse 12. Uh, we will read that verse and uh, the heading is Satan's strategy of persecuting God's people. Chapter 12, verse 12. Satan's strategy of persecuting God's people. Yes, we can read that verse. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Okay. So very interestingly, we have to read that portion because in this particular passage, or especially verse 12, uh, we read about Satan trying to persecute God's people. Satan trying to persecute God's people, especially the people of Israel, the people of Israel. You know, you know what is the reason that Satan is trying to persecute God's people 
and why Satan is, I mean, especially targeting uh, the people of Israel in this portion, in this chapter. Okay, the one reason is mentioned in verse 12 itself. Okay, what is that? It says that he knows, Satan knows that he has only a short time. Okay, only a short time. Okay, what is that? Uh, it is written in Malayalam. It is Pishaja Tanike Alpha Kalame Ullu in the Aranya Maha Krodha Tode Ningrode Adakil Irangi Vandirikino Alpha Kalame Ullu in Aranya. He knows that he has only a short time. Okay. But the interesting thing is this, you know, Satan knows that he has only a short time to work. And he is working hard to defeat the people of God in different ways. Okay. And he is working secretly and he is working publicly with or without our knowledge. Okay. So act, I mean, Satan is always active among the people of God, among the church, because he knows that he has only a short time. He has only a short time. Okay. Yedu Yadiche, Vadra Shaktamai active item in the Dayumakade deal, Property Chundrikan. But we, the believers, are not well aware about this, and we think that we have many more days in this world and have enough time to follow the word of God. And we will we will do something for the name of the Lord after a few years or after a few days. Okay. We are just a minute postponing the things. This is postponing. And we are saying, okay, I will do it tomorrow. Maybe I will do. Uh, something maybe after one year or two year or three year, you know. But actually, we forgot to think about one thing that we have only a short time in this world. Okay, Satan knows that he has only a short time in this world, and he is actively working for that. Okay, but at the same time, we have to know one thing that we have only a short time in this world, and we must be active in preparing ourselves for the second coming of Jesus Christ and doing something for the name of the Lord, for the name of the Lord, amen? So Satan's strategy is different, okay? The, the, the strategy of Satan, which is mentioned here in this passage, is persecuting God's people, okay? Persecuting God's people is the main strategy of Satan in this passage. We already saw that devil tried many times to defeat Jesus and the people of Israel and the New Testament church. Okay? Many times, many times. You know, in, the, in the previous verses we read, many times that Satan was attacking and Satan was trying to defeat Jesus Christ and he was uh, uh, trying to defeat the people of Israel. The woman is written there as the, as the people of Israel and he was trying to uh, defeat and even today he is trying to defeat the New Testament church. Again, in verse 13, in verse 13, we read that Satan persecuted the woman again. You know, in verse 13, it says that, and when the dragon saw that he was thrown down to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Okay? So again and again, Satan is trying to persecute the people of Israel, the people of Israel. Okay? You know, here, he begins with Israel, the woman, and creates a wave of anti-Semitism. Okay? And Satan has always, always hated the Jewish people because they are God's chosen people. Okay? So we have to understand why Satan is always targeting the people of Israel. Okay? And why Satan is um, I mean, hating the people of Israel or the Jewish people. Okay? There are many reasons for that. The first reason is I mean, the people of Israel I mean, are the God's chosen people. And also, I mean, uh, they are the vehicle through which salvation came into the world. Okay? Because Jesus Christ was born in a, in a Jewish family. So Satan was knowing that Jesus is going to be born uh, into this world in, in a Jewish family. And that may be the reason that always Satan is fighting against the people of Israel at the same time. In the New Testament, Satan is always working and actively, I mean, uh, doing something against uh, the, the, the New Testament church and the believers. Okay? So Satan would like to destroy the nation, particularly, I mean, as the time draws near for the Messiah to return to the earth, 
to establish the promised kingdom. So Satan knows very well that the, the coming of Messiah, the coming of Jesus Christ, and second, the second coming of Jesus Christ is at hand. We are not aware about that. We are not aware about that. But Satan knows that, okay, the second coming of Jesus Christ is at, at, at hand. And I have only a short period. I have only a short time to work among the people of God. So he is actively working. Okay? But here we read that during the last uh, uh, three and a half years of time, when the Antichrist puts more torture on Israel, okay, in the, in the first part of the uh, Great Tribulation period, seven years, we understand three and a half years will be, I mean, uh, the Antichrist will be ruling peacefully. Okay? The rule will be peaceful rule. Okay? At the same time, after that, the last three and a half years, he will start to, I mean, put more torture upon the people, of, especially for the people of Israel. But at the same time, we understand God will prepare a special place where the Jewish remnant will be protected and they will be cleared for his purpose to be fulfilled. That is what we read uh, in, um, in uh, verse 14. It says that, but the two wings of the great eagle were given to the woman so that she could fly into the wilderness to her place where she was nourished for a time and times and half a time. That means three and a half years. A time, a times, and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So listen, so the serpent or the dragon or the devil was trying to defeat, to attack the, 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 the nation of Israel. But during the time of this great tribulation, here specifically in verse 14, it says that God is preparing something for the people of Israel and God will prepare a special place where the Jewish remnant, Jewish remnant means, you know, when Antichrist is ruling over the world, when many of the people, many of the people uh, will be taken into a separate place, many of the people of Israel will be taken into a protected area okay, by God. At the same time, there will be many people who will be dying. Okay? They will say, no, no, no. We understand that this, I mean, Antichrist is not the Messiah. So they will deny that Antichrist and many will be dying on that day. And at the same time, many people will be going to a protected place which is prepared by God and many people will be there. So the Jewish remnant will be protected and cared for his purpose to be fulfilled. So God has a particular purpose about the people of Israel. So God will fulfill that I mean, purpose about the people of Israel. So it is very interesting that the escape of remnant from Satan is described in terms of flying eagle. Okay, So uh, it is written, especially in chapter 12, verse 14, that, but the two wings of the great eagle were given to the woman. That means given to the, given to the people of Israel. Okay, so always when you when you read Bible, especially in uh, in uh, Deuteronomy and uh, um, Exodus and all those uh, portions, we understand that um, uh, the people of Israel or the Jewish people they were escaping from uh, from some kind of uh, bondage, some kind of uh, um, uh, what is that uh, uh, exile period, uh, just like a, just like flying uh, over the eagle. That's what we understand that, you know, the remnant was escaping from Satan that is described in the terms of a flying eagle. OK, so actually uh, uh, this is a this is a repeated, repeated image in the Old Testament. OK, with reference to the Israel. OK, so God delivered the people of Israel from Egypt on the eagle's wings. Okay, That's what we read in Exodus chapter 19 verse 4. So in Exodus chapter 19, verse 4, we understand God delivered the people of Israel from Egypt on eagles' wings. And also, he cared for the people in the wilderness as an eagle would her young. Okay? In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 11 and 12. Okay? So God was caring for his people in the wilderness as an eagle would her young. And again, you know, when they were returning from Babylon, when they were returning from Babylon, 
okay, in Babylonian uh, captivity, I mean, it was like, uh, I mean, mounting up with wings of eagles, okay? So it was like a mounting up with wings of eagles. Kaligan Mare Pole, Siragadi Chuirna, Avri Parnu Virina, Ran Potilana, Avri Vidan Virina, Babylonian, Captivity in the Virina. So Angarula, Utrista Langalim, I mean, Ingarula, Ugamanangal, Namtikana, the Kornakarina. Okay, so I was just telling that, you know, many a times we understand in Bible, you know, the people were taken to another place or one place to another place in, uh, I mean, just like a flying. I mean, in the in the in the wings of the eagle. Okay. Now, again, uh, let us read maybe uh, verses fifteen to seventy. Yeah, fifteen to seventy. Um, the serpent poured out water like a river out of his mouth from after the woman to sweep her away with with the flood. Um, but the earth came to the help of the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from his mouth. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And he stood on the sand of the sea. Okay, so in verses 15 to 17, I mean, uh, uh, we read that, I mean, uh, he is continually persecuting the Israel. Okay, again, you know, the serpent or the dragon or Satan was uh, uh, persecuting the people of Israel. And again, in verse 15 to 17, we read that um, uh, uh, Satan or the dragon is continually persecuting the people of Israel. Okay, it is written that the serpent or the Satan poured water like a river out of his mouth towards the people of Israel so that he might cause her to be swept away from the flood. So with the flood, with the flood, okay? So this is what we understand. The serpent or the dragon or the Satan was pouring out the water like a river out of his mouth towards the people of Israel. And through that, through that, Satan was, I mean, uh, thinking that, okay, with this, I can, I can remove, I can remove the nation of Israel from this world. And I can kill, I can destroy the nation of Israel from the from the face of the earth. Okay. But it was not possible for them. It was not possible for them. In uh, in verse 16, okay, you can see the miracle of God. In 16, you can see the miracle of God. What is that? But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and drank up the river which the dragon poured out to his mouth. Okay, this is the miracle of God, which happened, which is coming for the people of Israel. In verse 16, it says that the, the earth helped the woman and it already, I mean, opened his mouth, its mouth and drank up the river. Okay, it's the dragon poured out of his mouth. So this is the care of God. This is the preparation. This is the protection of God for the people of God, even in the time of the great tribulation, when Antichrist is I mean, persecuting the people, at the same time, God is preparing something for the people of God. God is caring for them. God is, I mean, making some arrangements to keep those people in a, in a particular place. Okay. So nothing will harm them. Okay. And even let me conclude, uh, I mean, uh, today's class with uh, a, a, a reminder about the privilege of a believer. Okay. So as we are the believers of Jesus Christ, we have a privilege. We have a privilege. That privilege is written in verse 11 of chapter 12. Once again, we read that verse 11. Yeah. Um, and they have conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they have loved not their lives even unto death. Okay. So what is that? You know, uh, that particular verse shows that even if Satan is um, uh, always persecuting the children of God, the victory belongs to us through the blood of the Lamb and by our testimony. Okay? Kunyadinde rektan nimatom, kunyadinde rektan nimatom, tangalude sachivadanam nevatom, I mean, our Avane Jechu, Marana Pariyandam, tangalude prana nesne hichadu villa. Okay? There are three things which is written particularly in chapter 12, verse 11, that only because of the blood of the Lamb, that means the blood of Jesus Christ, 
and because of the word of their testimony and they, they did not love their, their life even in the there were many people there will be many people during the time of the great tribulation you know they mistakenly they said okay oh, we cannot accept jesus as a messiah but at the same time during the time of the great tribulation these people of israel they will say okay oh, we 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 could not i mean accept jesus but now we say and we understand that it was jesus christ it was messiah and again they are denying the antichrist okay and they will die okay and when they die you can say that in their life even they faced with death when they were supposed to be killed and when they were uh, i mean uh, when i mean antichrist was trying to kill them when antichrist was i mean trying to kill them um uh, we understand that those people were not ready to accept uh, antichrist and uh, they said no 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 we will not accept uh, uh, antichrist because we believe in jesus christ okay so because of that only many people will be killed many people will be killed okay only but they understand that it is only because of the i mean the blood of jesus christ that we are living and it is only because of our testimony that we are living in this world you know we have to understand one thing it's it's a privilege for every believer that after the church is taken to heaven after the church is taken to heaven okay the believers will stand before the judgment seat of jesus christ and they will have their works examined okay so this is called the judgment of the believers at the same time this is not going to be a judgment but this is going to be a rewarding function a rewarding function okay so according to that we understand we all will have to stand before the judgment seat of jesus christ all the believers we will have to stand before the judgment seat of jesus christ christuvinte nyayasthanathinte munbil nammal ellavaru nilkandadayittu varu let's just read maybe second corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 Second Corinthians verse five. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Okay, so we all will be standing before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. Okay. and we will have our works examined there will be an examination okay on the basis of this judgment rewards will be given so we are going to receive the rewards from the lord on that day on that day okay it seems that the devil will be present at this event and you know when when we are getting the reward from god the crowns that we are receiving from jesus christ you know in, in at the same time devil also will be present there okay so in that event what is going to happen the devil will accuse the saints the devil will accuse the saints the devil will accuse the 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 the, the people of god the children of god and pointing out all the spots and the wrinkles of the believers okay that's what we read in uh, ephesians chapter 5 verse 27 so jesus christ is trying to present all the believers in front of the father god without any spot okay without any blame okay that means blameless okay but satan will point out something okay and telling that okay there is a spot in his life and there is a wrinkle in that lady's i mean life or they he has many things to accuse okay because the work of that uh, i mean satan is accusing okay always he is accusing so on that day also he will come there efficient of the five verse 27 says that okay jesus is trying to keep us jesus is trying to present us if before i mean father god without any spot without any wrinkle without any blame okay because you know devil means accuser okay devil will do that so he may stand at the throne of god and will fight for the saints by accusing them but jesus christ jesus christ what is doing he is the heavenly advocate okay who is jesus in first john chapter 2 
first John chapter uh, two verses one and two, we read that Jesus Christ is the heavenly advocate for the believers of God. Amen. And He will be present for the church before God's holy throne. This is the this is the confidence that we have as believers. Amen. We have a heavenly advocate, Jesus Christ. Amen. Standing right side of uh, I mean Father God. And, and telling that, okay, when I mean, this person is a person who God delivers, this person, I mean, this brother or this sister is a person who already got the sanctification. I mean, he already, I mean, justified by the, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this person is redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this person is glorified. I mean, and we have to understand one thing. We have to understand one thing. Because of Jesus Christ, I mean, died for us, we can overcome Satan's accusations. Amen. Let Satan bring any accusation against the, the people of God, the children of God, the believers. Amen. We believe that by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb, and we have a word of testimony that we are redeemed and we are justified and we are glorified, not by our own merit, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So this evening, let me let me tell you one thing that, I mean, we are saved and we are delivered and we are redeemed. We are glorified and we are justified. Amen. It is not only because our merit, but only because of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. That means the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. Okay. So we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And also we are redeemed by the testimony that we have about Jesus Christ, okay? Because we say that we are redeemed by, by the blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, so this evening, let us all submit us with the mighty hand of God. I mean, I have been just, I mean, uh, telling you that, I mean, Satan has different kinds of strategies to defeat the people of God. Satan has different kinds of strategies and Satan is trying to persecute the people of God, the families, the church, and some individuals but at the same time, we understand, I mean, God's presence is with us. I mean, God can give the, give the power. God can, I mean, strengthen every person. Hallelujah. So this evening, let me conclude with this word that uh, when, when Satan is trying to attack Jesus, when Satan is, I mean, trying to attack the people of Israel, when Satan is trying to attack or torture the, the New Testament church, the people of God, I mean, there is a God who can care for us. Hallelujah. There is a God who is providing the needs of the people. There is a God who can, I mean, protect the people of God. Hallelujah. That's what we understand from this chapter 12. I mean, this evening also, hallelujah. Let me, let me encourage you with the word of God that, I mean, if you're going through any troublesome situation in this evening, hallelujah, the Bible says that, I mean, I mean, God of, I mean, the almighty God is there and God is preparing something for you. I mean, he, he can keep you under his mighty wings. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Even if, I mean, you, your family members or your, I mean, your, your individual life or your family members your, or your friends, I mean, somebody is there to have, I mean, some prayer request or something. Hallelujah. And if there is somebody, I mean, how to say that, okay, oh Lord, I mean, I, I mean, oh, pastor, just pray for me. Hallelujah. If your family want to, I mean, pray, I mean, requesting to, the prayer of the church this evening, hallelujah, but the spirit of the Lord says that again, I mean, God is in control, and God will care for you, the, the, the almighty God will provide your needs, hallelujah, this evening, let us all surrender life to the presence of God, hallelujah, I understand, I mean, there are many people, I mean, so them, hallelujah, praying for different, different, different prayer requests, hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah.